The next important component to talk about is a capacitor. A capacitor is a device, as electronic circuit component, that can carry charge and store it for subsequent use. Now, the symbol, the electronic symbol for a capacitor looks something like this. It's two plates connected on the ends of a wire, and there can be voltage stored across the plates of the capacitor that, that then stay and hold charge. The units of capacitance are the farad, usually described with an F, and capacitance is typically described with the letter C. Now, again, the key is to understand what the relationship between voltage and current are through a capacitor. And to do so, we first want to turn to the water pipe analogy. So if we have a water pipe and we're thinking about flow through this pipe, then the capacitor would be a component along the pipe that seals off, too much, that seals off edge to edge and is a piece of rubber that will deflect as a function of the pressure. Now, what does that mean? That means that for larger pressures of water, there will be more deflection, right? It's, the rubber is storing energy, storing tension in it and deflecting appropriately. For lower pressures, the deflection is less. And so you might look at this and say, well, why is this useful? Because for a fixed volt, for a fixed amount of pressure, at some point, the rubber is just going to deform to some amount and then it's going to stop and then current isn't going to flow anymore. That seems like a bad thing. Well, it turns out it's completely accurate. This is the behavior of a capacitor for a fixed voltage. Once the capacitor is finished charging, Right? It's finished deforming and accommodating to the pressure being applied. It will block current flow. And so the, what you can see then is that the amount that this, that, this, that this membrane deflects, the amount of capacity it has to carry charge is a function then of the pressure being applied and relates the charge that it can hold. We actually look at the electronic equation that relates the capacitance to voltage and current. It's not as easy to write down as the resistor. Instead, we have to think about how much water is being stored here by the deflection of the rubber. Similarly, it's all about how much charge is being stored, how many electrons are being stored on the plates of, of, the, of the capacitor. And that will be a function of what the voltage being applied is. And so instead of current, we have to talk about charge. And so that's the equation that relates, that relates the charge to the voltage is Q, for charge, right, the amount of electricity being stored, the amount of electrons being charged, stored, or the amount of water molecules being kept uh, that are being accumulated by this rubber is equal to and proportional to the, the voltage times the capacitance, just proportional, and which makes sense, right? The more pressure you apply, the more this is going to deform, and the more water molecules will be stored, right? available to be pushed back and recoiled when the pressure goes away. And how much charge accumulates is a function of the capacitance. Something that's extremely rubbery and very flexible and deflects a lot is going to store a whole bunch of water for a fixed amount of voltage. 
and is going to store way more water, way more charge than something with a very low capacitance that is very stiff and doesn't bend as much. So capacitance is literally how stiff or not stiff the membrane here is in the water tube. Greater capacitance, more stretchiness, less stiffness. Lower capacitance, much more stiffness. Now, why does that make sense? Well, think about it. If you want to store some delta amount of charge, a little amount of water, for something that's extremely stiff and not bendy, then the amount of voltage you have to apply to get even an incremental more amount of charge of water molecules stored is extremely high. Whereas something that has a huge capacitance, right, is super stretchy, for even the smallest of changes in increase in voltage here or pressure, it will deform way more and store way more current. That's what this is, that's what this relationship is. Now that makes intuitive sense in terms of the relationship, but this doesn't help us because we don't talk about circuits with respect to charge. We talk about circuits with respect to current. So we have to change this equation to get us into something that's got voltage and current, not voltage and charge. And mercifully, we know that charge is actually related to current. Current is simply the derivative, dq dt, of charge, right? Because what is charge? Charge is the number of water molecules and the rate of change, right? The, the movement of water molecules over a fixed area in time, right? The rate of change of, of water molecules, or in this case, electric charge, electrons, is current. And so if we want to take this equation and get it in terms of I, we have to differentiate both sides with respect to T. And so we will do exactly that. We'll take dQ dt, and that gives us I, and we're gonna make that set that equal to C, because that's just a constant, times dV dt, dV dt, the derivative, the rate of change of voltage. I'm also gonna write that for, some, for ease of understanding as V dot. And so this is the equation that relates capacitance, voltage, and current for a capacitor. And if we were to then draw the full voltage dia, the circuit diagram, plus, minus, with the capacitor component here. Then we could label this as V, and we would label this as I, and we would label this as C. And for a fixed voltage, an unchanging voltage, what will you see? You will see that, that the change of voltage is zero, and therefore in steady state, after this is done charging, right, volt, that, that, that electric potential has been pushed into the system, right, the membrane has finished deforming, I is going to be zero because the delta V dt, right, the change in voltage over time is zero. This is a very uninteresting circuit all by itself because this is a fixed voltage. These are way more interesting when the voltage source is not is not a fixed voltage, but instead is an AC or changing voltage source, right? So the electricity that comes out of the wall is AC. And that is much more interesting because that will describe, that will make, mean that this circuit has dynamics over time that can be well modeled and understood because suddenly dV dt is not is not zero at all times. This is now V of T, that means this is I of T, and this C is static and it doesn't change. Because V of T here, dV dt is non-zero, then I also becomes non-zero, and this is an interesting circuit to model. And so 
Capacitors are things that store charge and have interesting properties and circuits when you have changing voltages or changing currents. In the context of a static voltage, not much is going on here. This is the equivalent of an open at that point in steady state. That's the basics to understand capacitors.